You are now listening to the A Dose of Disruption podcast, powered by Experian. Weekly compelling conversations on making money moves and growing your network. The place where you can learn to be you and do you all at the same time. I'm your host, Shelly Bell. And now, let's see what this week's Level Up looks like. All right. What's up, y'all? Let's get into it with our quote of the day. Sorry. Yesterday was the deadline for complaints. Ooh, I like that. You know why? Because when I say, when I talk to people and I'm, it's, so the quote is, sorry, yesterday was a deadline for complaints. <laughs> That's a good one. Put that in your uh, signature uh, so that you can make sure that when people send you emails that they know. Um, but I love that because when I talk to people about, you know, what advice would you give your younger self? A lot of times people want to go back to when they were 10 or when they were five or when they were like 18. I'm like, no, no, no. Actually, yesterday is still your younger self. And so when you think about moving forward and letting go of things or whatever you need to reshape move, today is a new day. And when when you're trying, when you're uh, working through energy that people are sending you and thinking about like, oh, hey, you know what? Sorry, <laughs> yesterday was a deadline for complaints. All right, here we go. So let's jump to the, today's Shelly Brief. Shelly Brief. All right, so biden's cabinet all right let's jump into this topic because uh we are you know the news uh as is is almost like you know it's the news around the cabinet is almost like we're doing like a uh come on down right and then we're like oh yes oh my god oh my god yes right on the prices right we're like yes finally some people that look like us um joining the cabinet uh some some people who look like us being gender women whatever it could be you know of race, all those things. We just happen to have somebody that's looking different. All right. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about on today's Shelley Brief is that if uh, Biden's cabinet has a person of color or a woman to head the Treasury or the Defense Departments, um, that would be the first time in history. So these two offices, the, the head of the Treasury and the head of the Defense Department, are the only two remaining departments that have only had a white man lead, all right? So when you think about it, it's like, no wonder our money ain't right. We we, we had no people of color running it. Now listen, you put a single mom up at the head of the treasury, I think we'll be cooking with gas, okay? We'll be saving money, everybody's grocery, everybody will be couponing, you know, and, and these are stereotypical things. But what I'm saying is, that women studies show women save money okay even when you invest in women women save you money right but we still keep for some reason investing in these white men so i'm saying that to have a woman as the head of the head of defense and the head of uh the treasury is where we need to go i'm saying woman and a person of color yes but i'm saying woman of color is what is what my preference would be uh one because we rock but also considering that like We're going to make sure that these are sound decisions. And I think like there's this bogus kind of argument around like, oh, if a woman is in charge, the the, the time that she has her, she's on her period, will she like make rash decisions? It's like looking at these emotional ass white men make rash decisions all the time. And you worried about what a woman is going to do one time a month. Trump been making rash decisions for four years. (laughs) Okay. Some of these other white men in office been making rash decisions for four years, all based off of emotion. And you worried about one time a month, a woman possibly, and that is bogus anyway, but even if we want to entertain that thought. So ultimately I'm saying cognitive diversity is hella important for us changing the world. Uh, gender diversity and uh, racial diversity typically bring cognitive diversity, diverse ways of thinking, um, diverse backgrounds and personal experiences is what we need to be the head of the treasury and what we need to be our head of defense because we got to get way more strategic if we're going to rebuild trust and when we're going to and we're going to rebuild our economy so i am saying you know i am here for these two positions no longer being held up in history as only being occupied by white men and i think white men are cool you know to a certain extent i think the ones that i've met that are my friends they all good. It's time for change in general. So having somebody uh, occupy these spaces that are not white men, that has a diverse, different perspective, I'm here for it. So I'm hoping that Biden does that. 
because uh, he got a lot to handle when it comes to rebuilding trust for, for the government. So that this administration is going to have a lot on their back considering the pandemic and rebuilding the economy, unemployment, broadband to rural areas, education. Like you're going to need some folks in there that understand these issues a little bit more deep. And so I look forward to that. All right. There it is. Today's Shelly Brief. I um, want to get into today's thought partner. Thank you so much. I'm excited for what we're about to talk about next. So here we go. Today's thought partner is a dear friend of mine, but also just a major force in a radical self-love. I'm super hyped to talk to her, one, because we could chop it up with just as humans um, and just hear about all the amazing work that she's doing. And she's been like floating the world. And I'm like, how do I live that life? So maybe I can get some insight on that today. <laughs> uh, my homie, my love. I uh, really appreciate you, Sonya Renee Taylor. Welcome to A Dose of Disruption. How you doing? I am good, Shelly. Thank you for having me on A Dose of Disruption. <laughs> yeah, well, you you are you already know. You're disrupting everywhere. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's what you thought? What's up, y'all? Let me tell y'all this. All right. Um, so a little bit of background, just, just for everybody to know. Uh, tell us a little bit about starting the body is not an apology i remember the day you put the facebook post out with the poem and yeah. I, admittedly i was like okay sorry girl i don't know but yeah whatever you do, <laughs> whatever you about to do okay girl whatever i don't you know. do and do that right yeah, right <laughs> what what were you uh, thinking what like what was where were you at like if you could take us back to that moment were you thinking it would be here what were you gonna do like Tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm the kind of person who I have the big vision for, I see the end and before I see all the steps that it will take to get there. Um, and so I knew that my intention was to start a movement. I knew, I knew that my intent, I was like, I'm starting a movement, follow me. <laughs> and I don't necessarily know where it's going yet, but come along for the ride. Uh, and, you know, so the, the words, you know, the words, your body is not an apology. Um, came from a conversation with a friend uh, in the Poetry Slam community, which is where you and I uh, met each other in the poetry community. Um, and it came out of a conversation with a friend where where she was sharing about some sexual decisions uh, and a potential unintended pregnancy and a lot of fear and concern about that and, um, and some places where she had been compromising um, her own sort of dignity and integrity because of her disability. And when she shared that with me, I said to her, your body is not an apology. It's not something you offer to someone to say, sorry for my disability. And I'm, I'm very clear that those words meant, meant to be said and meant to be a thing in the world. And that I just happened to be lucky enough to be the conduit. Um, and so once they came out of my face, they were like, well, that's great. We gave that to that person. Now the rest of it's for you, Sonia. So what you're going to, what you going to do with it? Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to write a poem. That sounds hella poetic. So then I wrote the poem and, you know, words are, words are spells. You know, they, we making things when we talk. And, and so when I was on stage performing saying the body is not an apology, the body is not an apology, the body is not an apology every single night at a show. I was making something um, and I wasn't quite sure yet what I was making, but I knew that I was making one. I was making a place for me to feel uncomfortable in all the places where I wasn't aligned with those words and all the places where I was living like my body was an apology while saying the body is not. Um, and so that was really where it began. It was like, okay, there's this poem. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this, picture up that I'd been hiding in my phone um, where I felt beautiful and fabulous in my body. And I also could hear all of the external voices telling me all the reasons why I shouldn't feel that way. Mm. Uh, and so I, it kept me hiding the picture for months and months. And then eventually on February 9th, I decided to post the picture. Um, I asked other people to share pictures where they felt powerful and in their bodies. And when 30 people tagged me in photos, the next day I was like, well, maybe we need a little space. <laughs> we're, we're allowed to do something. this. We probably... Maybe we're on to something. You know, for me, the, you know, when you're like, what is it? The, uh, <laughs> um, your, um, 
what is oh what's the I'm I'm trying to think of a startup term your lowest viable yeah option minimal your, viable product your minimal right your your minimal viable product I was like thirty people want this. So it must be a thing. <laughs> right. Uh, and so that's what made me decide to start the Facebook page. Um, and then, you know, once I had people who were like, yes, we're into this. And I was like, okay, then word, it's a movement. All I need is 30 people to follow me for me to decide it's a movement. Listen, for me, you, you give me two likes on a Facebook post. <laughs> and my it's shenanigan on. is on the bottom, right? Um, on. I love that because I think one minimal minimal viable product piece but then you went into business with it and then how did that like feel because you know it's almost like some people consider it in some ways like accidental entrepreneurship where it's like oh thought of a thing went out and did a thing oh thing is working yeah so so like what was that process for you from a business standpoint where like here you are 30 people like it now a hundred thousand people now two hundred yeah. three you know like what is that like i can't even imagine what that felt like mentally on top of just like life changes you know all yeah. these other things what was your process like going from like oh facebook post poem to psh, like yeah a hundred real quick yeah i think i mean i think accidental entrepreneur is the totally appropriate term for it because i wasn't trying to start a business i'm not you know, I would definitely say at that particular point in my life, I was not business oriented. I was, I was a poet, you know, I was like, I slept on people's couches and slung CDs for a living, (laughs) you know, it was like paying my rent, trying to win poetry slams. And so it definitely wasn't a business opportunity in my brain. It was a transformation opportunity, which is the first place Mm -hmm. I am motivated by is like, does this transform people? Um, but the business built itself up around me. What happened was I was like, here is this Facebook page that I'm going to curate and cultivate these ideas on. Um, and then I got to a point where I was like, yeah, I can't do this by myself. I should ask for some volunteers that want to help. So then I had two volunteers, somebody that helped volunteer to run the Facebook page and somebody who was like, yeah, I'll do some research and tell you about who these people are who like you and who are following the page. And I was like, awesome, because I'm not going to do that. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And so that person did that. And then somebody came along and said, I really have articles, like I have ideas about stories that I would like to write about these ideas. Can I write some stories for you? And I was like, well, yeah, there are people who want to be writers. Cool. Somebody was like, I want to start a support group where, you know, I get get people together and we could talk about these ideas in person. And I was like, cool. Somebody was like, I want to start something in Finland. I was like, well, go on ahead. And before I looked around, I was like, oh, there's an ecosystem of people who want to contribute to this idea and to the growing of this idea. Um, And my, you know, my master's degree is in organizational management with a focus in nonprofits. And I like to tell people that that's why. I never knew that. I've been knowing you for 10 years. (laughs) And I never, if somebody, I would have been like, what? No, it's not. Yes, yes, I mean, not because I don't think you're amazing and did it. I just don't know what I thought your degree was in. But I think lots of people don't, you know, basket weaving might as well be what it was. (laughs) Uh, But I tell people all the time that degree is how I knew I didn't want to be a nonprofit. Mm. I was like, yeah, no, we're not going to, we're not going to be a nonprofit. Uh, And what actually the ultimate thing that made me decide to, um, to formalize as a business structure was that. I was running into proprietary issues. Um, We were always having problems with Facebook. We were always getting banned. We were always getting, you know, our stuff taken down. That was consistent. Um, And then, and so I was like, well, we need our own space. Like I can't keep using these other people's platforms. So we need our own space. But then what happened was I opened up a magazine one time and they had a spread and it was called The Body Is Not An Apology. Um... And I was like, with no mention of, of me, of us, no link to the page, nothing. Just like they had made it up themselves. And I was like, okay, I see. I see how mm-hmm, I see how mm-hmm. I see how we'll do, you know, if if I'm not intentional, then this will become an idea that lives in the it'll be the, you know, it'll be the zipper. Right. Right. You know, it was like, oh, it, somebody did own it, but they don't know more. Now it's just the world. And while I was okay. It was less about, I always wanted it to be the world, but I did not want it to be corrupted by the way the the world corrupts things for its own purpose Mm -hmm, of profit mm -hmm. and exploitation. It mattered to me that the message didn't get lost. And so that's when I was like, all right, 
we're going to formalize and we're going to build our own platform okay. to, to host these ideas. Um, why, why was Facebook shutting you down because of, uh, they felt like the pitches were too, or the content was yeah, too. Cause, cause the content is radical intentionally. The work is radical self-love <laughs> and Facebook is a lot of things, but radical is not one of them. Uh, and so <laughs> when, you know, when we were posting, you know, posting things about like we posted a group of Senegalese tribal women. They don't wear shirts because Senegalese tribal women don't wear shirts. Right, right. Suspended. Yeah. And I was like, so we just suspending people for cultural difference? Okay. It was those sorts of things all the time. And um, one time we got suspended for putting a post that said, um, Black people, we honor you. This was after Philando Castile's killing. Black people, um, we honor your rage uh, and we love you unapologetically. And they took the post down. What? So it's interesting too, because I think like in order for you to start something this strong, this big and to move, to be a movement, you had to go through a pretty radical journey of your own. And you talked a little bit about that, but as a business owner, being so authentically you um, and sitting at this place of like having to make money, like, did you feel any type of tug of war in the growing of this? and now being responsible right at some point for all these people who are with you working for you and like you're being responsible for your own self you know radical journey like what like how how does that sit like where where does that kind of um feeling sit when it's like i'm being authentically me and now i'm my business is also based off of that and i'm also responsible for these people who have now become somewhat volunteers employees that kind of thing what is that feeling? Yeah. What kind of tug of war was there? What did you work through? Yeah, it's a, it's an, I mean, it's an intense journey <laughs> and an intense feeling of conflict around that. One of the things that first came up was when we needed to raise money to build the platform. Um, and so we did a crowdfunding campaign. The goal was eighty thousand dollars. We were, we were, we raised forty three thousand because we're a black woman led startup, and that's how much <laughs> I think what we raised about. $12,000 more than most <laughs> right. black women led right. startups usually raise. Uh, and so, um, but the, the stories, my own, my own personal journey was so wrapped up in like all of my fear about asking for help, all of my fear that I would never be met, all of my fear that I was not going to have enough, that we were not going to have enough, that, that people weren't going to believe in this, but like all of it was so deeply embedded in the process. It was, it was, grueling it's one of the most painful things it was so difficult um but it was also transformative because one of the things that has been true about this work from day one is it's confronting mm. right it's like here are all the places where you are not in alignment with the thing it is that you are saying in the world um and so that was like hurdle number one and mm. then hurdle number two was like all right i'm going to bring people onto this team and i've got to pay them right I got to pay them from this thing. I haven't figured out quite yet how to make money from. So like, I was like, yes. And I mean, and I think that's always been the tension that lives inside the body is not an apology is it, it was an inspiring vision, right? And people absolutely came on board and I came into the digital media sort of field right at the time when advertising start, stopped being the thing that made digital media platforms run mm. uh so the so the revenue from advertising was tanking as i was like building up my team and then i was like how are we gonna pay for this and so i i think that we were one of the first people to introduce subscribe we were doing subscriptions mm. before uh you know before washington post and new york times were doing subscription models we saw that really early but we also we're still a little baby entity, mm -hmm. you know? And so we, I think one of the challenges for me inside of the body is not an apology has been, what does it mean to be a visionary? Which means that I see things before other people see things, but it also means that I'm not quite yet at the place to capitalize on them mm. in the way that other people will be when it's super mainstream. Come on, um, what, like, <laughs> come on, that, like here we are, okay? That, like right? literally life. And I think this is yeah. such an interesting point from just like a freaking psychic, you know, spiritual insight, you know, level, because yeah. I think that's always been, always being before your time, yep. does not always feel profitable. 
unless yeah. you what I found, I guess, and this is just me playing with it because I don't have a solution yet. Right. But, um, <laughs> unless you actually have a group of, of people that is your team that are not before their time. God, yes. And who can do the practical, this is what it does right now pieces. Absolutely. And I think that I have um, that's an excellent point, and I don't know if I've always gotten that. I think that that's a, 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 a smart place to be right now, right? It's like if you're living, if you're a visionary, find your team who is grounded in the practical and right now that can help you and find you a co founder that's grounded in the yeah, practical right. and right now, you know? So that when y'all are moving together, you're like, I'm up here, and they're like, great, because I'm holding it down right, right here. <laughs> <laughs> right, like you run on. And yeah, you run over here, right? Exactly. No, so 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 important. Important. So, as the body is is not an apology group, and um, you reached a certain point, you had you made some decisions, and so mm -hmm. where are you now? Like, where are you with it now? I know you have some books. So, the body is not an apology. It's also a book. So, for those yeah. out there, you should check that out. Definitely uh, get that. It's amazing. And then you have another book or two coming out, right? Yeah, I got a lot of books. I'm doing a lot of book things. <laughs> That's actually what's been most interesting. So in 2017, um, I let go of uh, all of the staff of the body's not an apology except for one person. Um, for all of 2018, no, 2018, I did that. In all of 2018 and 2019, we just ran the site as um, an archive site. So the thousands plus articles that exist on the site, um, exploring the intersection of body and social justice and um, identity all still live there. People still visit. We still see, you know, I don't know, about 100,000 people a month um, who just come and look at old articles. Um, but we have not published new content. Our, actually, today is the first day in two years that we will publish a new article. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so, so there's a new article going up today. Uh, but but part of that was I was like, this isn't this isn't working in the way that I needed to work yet. Right. Like in it. And it's one of those things where I was like, right, I'm we are staff heavy and we are not money heavy. And so we're going to have to figure out how to what the orientation of this work is. And it was funny. I spent those last two years really orienting, relating to the body is not an apology as a child. It was like I felt like it was a. Um, like a 23 year old who hasn't left home yet. And I was like, you can't just be in here eating up all my food. <laughs> you eat my groceries, you're running up my light bill and you ain't got nothing on neither. <laughs> and there was this way I was like, that's not going to work. Um, and so I had to get really honest about what do I want to be doing? Not what should I be doing? Cause that's really what started happening was like, but there are hundreds of thousands of people who come here to look for this. I should do this. And I was like, Right. I sh I, I'm shooting all over myself and I'm not getting any joy. Right. Like I'm sitting in the mess of shooting all over myself and I don't I don't feel happy. And so I had to re really recalibrate and say, what what brings me joy and what do I want to be doing? And I got clear. I was like, I want to be talking about these ideas. I want to spread these ideas into the world. I want to help people live them more fully. I don't want to run a company in that way. In, in the way, and one of the biggest challenges of the body is not an apology has always been, I was a solopreneur. I could, I did not have a co-founder. I didn't have that person who was like, I'm holding down right here. I see you visionary. I had an amazing team of people like 32 when we were running at our highest, um, you know, at, with, at our fullest capacity, a team of 32 people who were like, we love you. We believe in you. Tell us what to do. And I was like, that's too much. That's like having 32 mm, mm, children. Mm, mm, mm. That's 32 kids. Mommy, we love you. Feed us. Mm. <laughs> Mommy, we love you. What time should I clean? I was like, it's too many decisions. It's too much responsibility on just one person. And so, so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. What I do want to do is share these ideas, be in conversation with these ideas. And, and the book made that really possible. So when the book um, came out in February of 2018, um, it was a way to like put the ideas. It was doing what the, what the magazine had done, which is how do I put the ideas out into the world so that people can be inside of the ideas. Um, but 
in this way, I didn't have to do, I didn't have to control that. I did the part that I was supposed to do. I wrote the book. Then everybody else got to be inside of the work in the way that they wanted to. And when they wanted to know more or do more, they called my agent and said, can Sonia come and talk to us about this? And I was like, yes, that is exactly the orientation that I want to be in. Thank you. So, I mean that, you know, even that is just radical in itself, being able to say, I built this huge thing and now you know what, but what makes me most happy is to do this thing and make this move. So I really appreciate that. Um, Any last thoughts and like now where you're at, what what should people do? Where can they find you? What, you know, what should we be doing next? So the thing, let me, so I'll tell you where you can find me specifically around the work of the body is not an apology. You should absolutely, the second edition drops on February. You should order your second edition now. If you could find a first edition, which you probably can't, I think they're super sold out. Uh, so just pre-order the first, the second edition. There's also a workbook um, that is coming out uh, in March. So it'll be right out after the second edition. And that's for, you know, wanting to do a deeper dive into the individual and personal work of transformation around radical self-love. Please do that. And I want to talk really quickly about the thing that I'm doing now that I feel like is a perfection on what I started doing with the body is not an apology. I am a co-founder. Such a beautiful word. (laughs) Such a beautiful (laughs) word. It's so nice not to do it alone. I am a co-founder of a project called Buyback Black Debt. Um, And it is myself, uh, Kay Williams and Katarina Norton are the three co-founders and visioning team members for Buyback Black Debt, which is a radical self-love, Black love and care ethic-based reparations project that that transforms black debt and white spiritual debt uh, through right relationship. And so we are paying off $83 million worth of black people debt. We have already paid off $387,000 in one month, which I just finished a, a podcast last week and they reminded me that that's more than the U.S. government has done anything towards reparations Listen, in 400 period. years. Period. Period. Why back what, back did it in October? Uh, okay, wait. I need to raise my hand because I'm like, yes. where do I go apply? How do I sign okay. up? Right. Okay. <laughs> so our so the list for recipients is closed right now till oh, we pay off no. this, this three million. So literally, we had 860 black folks um, apply, uh, and the total debt was 83 million dollars, right? And growing because interest, right? Um, and so. We, our commitment is that we are building the infrastructure in real time for one, what the new economy will look like, what um, black love and care in real time looks like in a material way. And and um, we'll pay that off, we'll complete that off, and then we will open up for a new round. And so keep your ears posted. If you want to know more about Buyback Black Debt, you should just send us an email at info at buybackblackdebt.org. Um, if you're a contributor, if you are a white person with resource and you would like to be part of making the new economy, making a, a world that actually works for everyone, um, you can sign up as a contributor and you can do that by, um, again, send an email to info at buybackblackdebt.org buyback um, and we will we will get you on the in the community. Yes, we'll make sure you put that in the show notes and everything Thank so people you. can find that. Also, uh, follow Sonya at... What is it? I am Sonya. What's your whole thing? Oh, uh, SonyaReneeTaylor.com, uh, which is where you can find. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I talk trash there. <laughs> you can do that uh, at Sonya Renee Taylor. You can go to my website, Sonya Renee Taylor. Um, and you can also um, sign up for my Patreon if you want to support the work. If you find that there's something that's guiding your journey and you want to support the work, sign up at Patreon at Sonya Renee Taylor. I love this. Thank you so much, Sonya. I appreciate you for being here. I love you always. Thanks for friend. having me. I love you. I'm so excited for you. Big moves all the way. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for joining us, Disruptors, and congratulations. You have taken another step to our being friggin' amazing. Make sure you visit us at adoseofdisruption.com where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or via RSS feed. Rate and subscribe if you're all the way live. Rate and subscribe if you're all the way live. That's right. Tell a friend, rate and subscribe to keep us all the way live. Come back next week so we can disrupt some more shit.